I know you've been told small rooms don't need wides. Your life has been a lie. Hey guys, welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about why you need wides. That's right, I said need. So first, let's talk about the issues that the wides are gonna fix. So let's look at what we have in a properly set up home theater. Now, according to Dolby, our main should be between 44 and 60 degrees apart or 22 to 30 degrees if you go off of zero here, right? Zero is where the center's at. That 30 from zero or 60 wide is gonna give us the best stereo imaging, that huge sound stage that everyone wants. I mean, that's really the sweet spot when I do room plans. That is my default. Can't always get there, but usually I'm pretty dang close. You know, with the, the room limitations, I can almost always get within a couple degrees of 60. So our surrounds at 90, we've got a main at 30. So that is 60 degrees between these two speakers. Doesn't matter how big the room is, doesn't matter how small the room is, that doesn't change. You gotta think in degrees and quit thinking in how big the room is. That's where people screw up and you know, wides are only needed for, for large rooms. Why? The degrees are the same. Here we've got 60 degrees. Instead of talking with, you know, between our mains, which is 60 here, we're gonna use everything off of zero because that's how Dolby specs it. You know, if you look on there, you'll see the main should be, be 22 to 40 degrees. So we're gonna use that for this video. So here we've got, you know, our mains at 30, but often you'll see guys where their uh, mains are behind the screen. Now a 16 by nine screen, you know, 45 degrees is really the sweet spot. Can't really get, you know, you get 50 in a 16 by nine, so it's getting fatiguing where you may like it, but a lot of the people that come to watch in your room aren't gonna like it. It's just, you know, if you find nobody wants to watch, your wife's like, oh, I wanna watch the living room. You know, maybe she doesn't like the room because the screen's fatiguing. Anyway, if your screen's 45 degrees and your mains are behind it, chances are your mains are only 40 degrees or less apart. So that's a part, that's 20 off of zero, okay? So if you're 20 here and this is 90, that means you've got 70 degrees to fill back there. So you've probably got some gaps as the sound pans, maybe you don't realize it until you really fill them in, then you know things start popping or uh, popping into place. And of course you can use reflections to help you know, with that, but to kind of widen the sound stage, you can only do so much with acoustic panels, you really need to nail down the speaker placement. But anyway, enough about that. I'm just, just kind of saying it could be worse, you know, if your mains aren't properly placed, the issues are even worse. So, but we're gonna say you're properly set up, 30 degrees, 90, 60 degrees a gap. So home theater has more than one seat. We've got multiple seats. All right, so the problem in home theaters is, you know, we have small rooms, right? So whenever you move, from the main listening position where you're equidistant from the surrounds. You know, you move over here to the adjacent seat to the ones closest to the walls. Now all of a sudden, those speakers are much louder than they should be. You know, in a larger room, moving over two feet isn't as big a deal because every time we double distance, the sound is going to increase 3D or decrease 3 dB. So, you know, in a 30 foot room, moving over two or three feet is not a big deal. In a smaller room, moving over two or three feet can be several dBs. So remember that small room, our issue is more than a larger room would be. A large room, you would have, you could get many seats where it wouldn't have, you know, you wouldn't have much of a change in sound moving left to right. Smaller rooms, it's gonna happen quickly. All right, so we've got this guy sitting next to this surround. It's much louder than it should be. A car passes, you're watching, you're watching a video or you're watching a movie and a car is panning. The car comes into this main right here and then it's gonna come across. Now to do that, the sound is going to get quieter in the speaker and louder in this speaker, okay? That's how sound moves or pans around your room. You know, the, the system is gonna use the speakers you have assigned to the room, you know, in your amp assignment and that's how it moves stuff around. It's panning's happening all around this room. So we've got our guy sitting right here, the car is coming, and for this person right here, let's say that car is here, okay? The phantom image of that vehicle is kind of between the two. We're stopping in a moment in time. Now for this guy, he's hearing this speaker louder than anyone else in the room. So for him, that car is not here. That car is already at his side, okay? So what happens is for him, the car jumps from that speaker to right beside him. He doesn't get that nice fluid panning, okay? It jumps. 
it's already audible when everyone else is hearing it up here somewhere. Okay, and then the car continues on to the back. Now, the whole time everyone else is hearing a fluid panning around the room. For him, the car has been there, it jumped there, and it's too loud, and it's hanging around in this speaker too long. And that's the problem. We need to get the sound to pan around the room for this guy and get in that speaker and get out of that speaker faster. It needs to spend less time in that speaker so it's not annoying, and we need to give him some nice panning around the room as well. So the answer to that is actually something Trinov, you know, in their white pages, and their white pages, some people use that for training. I use uh, some of their methods when I do room plans, you know, for laying the wides out. I use their methods versus some of the more traditional methods, just because I think it sounds better. But anyway, to solve this issue, they use a wide more speakers okay so let's talk about what happens when we add that wide first let's go ahead and add it so i've got some blue tape here so we already know where our surround is so i can feel the fabric uh, right there okay here is our wide okay in wall speaker by triad it has exact same drivers as all the other surrounds and rears and atmos in this room so anyway it's an awesome angled wide so let's talk about what happens now so now that car is passing, it's coming on across. When the car is here, this guy hears the car here. Okay, he doesn't hear it like he did before in his surround. Now he hears it where it should be, moving through the side of the room, okay? We don't need this speaker to pull objects to this position. We have a speaker here. As a matter of fact, you know, for that speaker there, it's not gonna be active anywhere between here and there. Okay, the processor knows I've got a wide. I'm gonna use it for all the steering in this area. Now, whenever the car comes from here, from the wide to the surround, that's when it's gonna start engaging that surround and steering the car or pulling the car through, you know, this angle or this section of degrees right here. So, now this guy's much happier because sound didn't just jump magically. The car didn't just boom. Boom, here it is. It went from here to here like magic. Now he actually gets to enjoy it. He gets movement through the room. This speaker, now yes, it's still too loud, but it's in that speaker much less. So now he's not annoyed by it. Now I forgot to mention this. We do have these lifted up a little bit. They're a foot or so above the head level to the acoustic center. You know, we have to stay in the vertical uh, sweet spot a dispersion of our speakers, which we have, you know, so you can lift those up and you should lift them up a little bit. You just have to be careful. So the bottom line is we have reduced the time that sound is present in this speaker. So now the flanking seats can actually enjoy the movie. They get movement through the room. Hopefully I explain this well enough where you guys can understand it and it makes sense because that's what I'm really trying to do is get it to make sense so that, you know, when someone else asks you, you can explain it to them because, you know, really it's, it's a shame that that rumor has gotten around and a lot of designers don't use it either. I'm not sure why. Uh, it is a very valuable tool and it really greatly improves the sound, even for the main listening position. I mean, 60 degrees right here is a lot of uh, panning that has to be done. And that's a, you know, up front, especially, we are very perceptible to what's going on in front of us, the way our ears are made. So, you know, every seat is going to be much happier with wides in the room. Now, not every room plan I do has wides. Sometimes, you know, we have budget constraints. You're actually just about all rooms, you know, that's one of my questions, what's your budget? Not so I can squeeze money out of them. If you've, I've done your room plan, you know I save. We, we cut everywhere we can, you know, if it's a, a performance, the cost ratio is very high on the performance side, not the budget side. Having enough processing, it does get more expensive because now you need a 9.1.4 or maybe a 9.1.6. Might be doing top middle unless your ceiling's kind of low wouldn't advise it you know but generally it's not a bad idea in this room we're doing the anthem avm 70s what we're going to be using i use uh some of my clients or actually we've sold that to them too i'm actually uh might be doing a review soon for the tone winner from amir at uh summit hi-fi the at the at 316 channel processor this baby is $1,349, 16 channels. Now, you heard me right, $1,349. So I'm looking forward to getting that baby in here and just seeing what it can do. 
You know, but with our up mixers we have nowadays, we can actually utilize the, the wides even on content that's not even in Atmos or, you know, doesn't have that natively mixed into it. I actually had a room client that has gone to a bunch of get togethers called GTGs, you know, AVS has put those on for years or people would go there and not AVS didn't put it on, but they would go on there and have big, huge get togethers certain times throughout the year. Well, this client of mine had gone to many rooms, you know, a lot of them professionally designed by pretty much anybody you can think of that, you know, some of the, the more well-known designers and the best room he, this is what he told me, the best room he had ever been in that sounded the best was by Michael Rosinski, a Facebook friend of mine, not a professional design. I mean, the guy knows what he's doing. Okay. We put it that way, but, uh, he had wides. I think he may have even had a 9.1.6 and his room is not big, but the guy told me it was the best sounding, most spacious, most enveloping room he'd ever heard. And of course he had a lot more speakers than a lot of designers and you know, the, the general consensus would have said you need. And here's this guy saying that's the best room he's ever heard. But remember, often in these get togethers, people aren't sitting at the main, you know, listening position. There's people everywhere. So some of these guys are off to the side. So a problem like that, where you've got a surround that's too close with nothing to help pull it through the room, you know, uh, that guy's really going to appreciate that. And it's going to sound better than other rooms he's been in that didn't have that. But anyway, guys, enough about that. This is my third video I've shot today. So, uh, I'm going to go get some, some dinner. It's, it's probably 10 o'clock p.m. right now. But if you're in the home theater and you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the notification bell and give this video a like. If you don't do those things or you're not already a subscriber, I want you to forget everything you just watched. This is for members only. So uh, until then, guys, I will see y'all next time. So drop some comments below on videos you want to see coming up. Anything you want to, you know, you think you want to know or other people might want to know. I do the same thing, anything I think y'all might want to know, like this video here, you know, but I need ideas, so drop them below, and until then, guys, I'll see y'all next time.